Today we're going to process up a deer. Nice six pointer. I'm not a big buck hunter. I'm more than happy to shoot a buck like this. Nice. Yeah, getting these uh, late season deer up here in the UP, sometimes uh, the weather can be pretty cold. We had to light a fire here in the garage, get a little comfortable to cut this one up. Hey there, outdoor YouTubers. It's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And like I said earlier, uh, today we're going to process up a deer. Now, if you guys have watched my channel before, you know that I have several deer processing videos. Okay, um, right from start to finish, from, from gutting to skinning to processing the whole thing out, what the different cuts of meats are for and, and what well, works pretty good to cut them up, uh, that sort of thing from making hamburger to making potato sausage. Several different videos at my channel, Knetter's Practical Outdoors, on processing up deer. Okay, I have a deer processing playlist, it's in the library section of my channel and all that stuff is there. So if you go to my channel, you'll see that I do already have a six-part series of videos that are titled Processing a Deer at Home, right? Part one, two, three, and so on. The smart stuff that takes place with the deer processing is done by my dad, okay? He's a career meat cutter. He's cut literally thousands of white-tailed deer up and he really knows what he's doing. I'm going to change it up a little bit uh, today. We're going to kind of try to condense... Um, processing an entire deer up into one video. It's going to be more of an overview, okay? That six-part series um, is really good because it really gets into the bone structure, you know, if you're doing the front shoulders. It really gets into how to make a roast, actually a roast recipe, how to add pork butt to the, to the roast that you're making, you know, how to bone out the neck and make a roast, all those sorts of things. So if you're kind of interested in taking it to the kind of the next level and doing some of that stuff that six part series is is probably really what you'd want to be watching but if you just kind of uh, are a little bit interested in it and you just kind of like an overview of how the deer gets broken down and what sections are good for what um, I, I think this video we're going to try to make this video work for that person okay like I said the, the, the six part series gets a little bit more in depth um, you know, my dad does uh, a hind quarter with a saw, one of them, and he does the other one with just a knife, okay? And, and there's a few, you know, different techniques involved depending on which way you go about doing that. But again, today's video is just going to be about kind of an overview, of breaking down the deer, and kind of what sections of the deer work for what, and we'll try to condense this down into one video today. All right, so... I got that deer skinned up and got my dad here with me and he's going to start uh, breaking it down and like I say we're going to try to do kind of a condensed version of how to process a deer. So I guess I'll just kind of let him get started. Okay. Well we'll go ahead and start like we did in the other film. We'll go ahead and get the shoulders knocked off right away. Maybe not monkey around as much. Take it off a little bit quicker, a little bit better. And. Uh, Nice front shoulder here, mm -hmm. and uh, this is going to be good. This is not, this is not badly hit at all. It's stuff that'll trim off very easily. So we'll go ahead and take this hind saddle off quickly. Like I say, there's a bone that exists right in here. We'll try to find where it starts or where it stops. Bone there, not here. Go ahead and. Knife that off. Mm -hmm. and go ahead around to this side. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, because what you like to do, right, is anywhere you can cut meat with a knife, you don't want to be running the saw through meat, right? right. You want to you wanna kind of uh, use the knife where you can and, and the right. saw where you have to. Sort of. And I know one thing, uh, right, you want to kind of have a dedicated 
meat saw, right? You don't yes. want to just have a saw that uh, does double duty uh, right. with sewer pipe or anything, right? If we drop that a little bit, it's no big deal. There we go. If you're not a real rib freak and you're going to take a lot of this nice meat off of this rib section, you can do it right here while it's hanging. I'll just go ahead and follow these ribs a little bit. Anything that's bloodshot will take off later. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's, it's not projectile tore up, it's just a little bit bloodshot. Sure. And that'll come off nice and there's still good slabs of meat there. Now, yeah, like when, when a lot of people talk about uh, eating like deer ribs, they're talking about that meat being left on them, right? Right. This yeah. will be left on and probably be your best ribs right up in this area. Yeah. Yeah, so like the, the ribs we're going to have left don't have nearly the meat that a lot of people are talking about right. when they talk about eating right. deer ribs. Yeah. Yeah, since you don't eat the ribs, they're not going to. We'll get uh, we'll get the meat off of them. Right, yep. And this is a easy way to get... Yeah, it's just hanging right in meat. right in front of you. Might as well get right, her there. Might as well grab it. Yeah, we'll just separate the rib from the neck. Right up here at this collar area, there's your brisket. It turns in right in this throat area. Just go right around all the way. Mm -hmm. Each other cut. We've cut it down good to the bone all the way. Forward position. And here's our full loin. Get any hair on it, just... Right down where you, like I say, you did a good job of taking the jacket off. Mm -hmm. No problem. And I'll do the same thing. I cut it down to the bone. Mm -hmm. There. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's your neck. That's basic breakdown. And there's our neck. All right. What we got here is pretty much that whole deer laying on the bench. A good thing to do maybe while it's here, since this has got a pretty good chest cavity. Now, you know, right up here, split this chest cavity. Now that'll make it maybe a little easier to get to get the rib bones off. Yeah, 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 we'll uh, we'll pick through it a little bit, but, sure. but like I say, when people talk about eating deer ribs, that's a lot of times not quite what they're talking about. No, no. Okay. And uh, so now, now you're just kind of you're just going to cut that in half just, just to uh, split it in half for just the to make it more yeah more so manageable. You don't have a great big long. Right. thing to make a loin strip. Uh, right. Loin strips out of. Yeah, I mean those big long loins kind of look cool, but. Yeah. In reality, it's a little easier to work with uh, right. smaller pieces. There. That uh, comes off real easy. So now we'll just go ahead. And I'm going to process this kind of quickly, but I'll still show you a way to do it in three individual pieces. That's quite easy. Uh, we'll do like we did in our film previously. Right here by this kneecap. Just go ahead of this kneecap. Cut yourself a little area around it. And then going on the opposite side of the kneecap, you have a nice, smooth bone there. And uh, all you have to do is take off a chunk of this shank meat on that smooth side. And then this side here consists of a flat bone here. It's a little frosty, but it'll work. Yeah, and, then you, and you come up over here and just keep working it off this side of that kneecap like uh, what you might refer to as the elbow in the arm. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take off this chunk of meat here. Not much, but it's enough. And then after you want to cross the flat bone, you get on this side of that bone and just sink your knife up underneath it. It's kind of concaved under there. You can take and just slip it out and that's it. Okay, since we have the shank boned out, we're going to go ahead and remove it, get it out of your way. And these front shoulders um, really don't have what you'd call a good steak cut in them. They're no. mostly for roasts, grind, maybe stew meat, that sort of thing, hey? So we got that one part out of the way. I'm going to go ahead 
There's two bones in this big section here. There's part of the shank bone yet and this blade bone. And they both meet in a socket area. And I'm going to go ahead and split that socket and cut this into two pieces for you so you can maybe uh, find out uh, a way of making it easier. Mm -hmm. So there is the socket that it's talking about, and it meets the blade bone. So we'll throw that over there now. Now all you have to do as far as taking out a bone is just write one straight bone all the way around this thing, and you'll get the bone out, and your meat will be boneless. And that's what you're kind of after, because we're going to put all this into trim. You just run your knife up to this socket area. Just keep going around the bone. You don't have to worry about how deep you go, because the meat is going to be used for grinding. And... Uh, this is just a way of getting your meat off around this socket bone without having to try to find it up in there. Mm -hmm. So that's all done now. Yep. That's the one piece that I... Mm -hmm. That's two pieces of the three we're going to get out of here. Now all you have left is the blade bone, which you put the seam side down where we separated that socket. Lay it up like this and you will feel a nice ridge of bone here. It just all comes right up into here, and it, like I say, it's like a little canoe paddle, almost. And uh, I'm just going to take the meat off of that and add it to this, and that'll be done. So you go on one side of that bone, and you can go on the other side of that bone. I'll go on the smaller side here first. There's what they call a, a chuck tender. People wanted to make their... Uh, meat or whatever. This is really not too bad of a piece of meat for coming out of the chuck. It almost looks like a poor man's tenderloin. And, uh, you know, that can be used for whatever you want. In our case, we're going to use it for trim for burger. So as you can see, that came off of that side. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and take the meat off of this side, which has a little wider flange on that bone over here. So you just take it out to the edge. You'll feel when you get out to the edge, it'll start to drop off. And then uh, just go down over the edge, and you got it off. Mm -hmm. And here's, this is all solid meat, with the exception of the fat. We're going to lean out of it, but it'll mm -hmm. work out just fine. Yep, and there's the... Uh this there's is, the canoe paddle you're talking about. Yeah, there's about. the canoe paddle, blade bone. So what we're going to do is all this meat in the tub is I'm going to go through that and I'm going to trim it up, get a little bit more of the fat content out of it, and uh, that'll make it a little bit better for our uh, grinding for burger. Okay, these are your hind legs or hind saddle area. It's connected with the backbone yet, so I'm just going to saw right down the middle of the backbone and split these two apart. And I'm going to work up one for you. You just have to take your time, and it'll come off nicely. Okay, so here we go with our hind quarter. Like I say, Dave is going to put most of his in this, into trim for graining, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you're going to keep your cuts for steaks. I'm just going mm -hmm. to take out a little bit of butt tender here. That's uh, not much, but it's, it's a little bit of tenderloin. It'll go with some more of the tenderloin that I get out from the inside loins over there later. So now uh, we're just going to take the sirloin tip off right by this bone where you took out that tender, not back here by the tail, by this part of the bone. Just put your knife down to the table and sink it. And you're going to have a femur bone that runs up here. Regardless what you're going to do with this meat, the way to take it off is to go ahead and follow that femur bone up right across the kneecap. The kneecap is right there. You can pop the joint by the kneecap. There's a little bit of bone here and a little bit of bone there. And then we just go ahead and uh, take off what is referred to as the sirloin tip. So now, uh, next there is some area here that you aren't going to use for anything other than trim. That's that shank area. And mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and take the shank bone out while it's sitting like this. And we'll get that trim into our big trim tub. You just yeah. go right down the shank, you come across the top of the shank, you can see the bone on this side, you can see the bone over here on the left side. Just go right up 
It'll go up a little ways and then you're going to get up into here. And you're going to, uh, by this kneecap, find a joint that's in here. It's a little frosty. But I found the joint and you just bust the joint loose. Then you can uh, go back, finish taking the meat off of the shank bone, hind shank bone. And there is your shank bone. And here is our trim meat that we're going to have to put in the burger. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, shank bone, has a lot of sinew in it, but when you grind it up, it's fine. Okay, next, this whole area in here is where the hip bone is situated. We're going to go ahead and slowly kind of just take that out because you want to get it off of the meat. And it's, a, it's kind of a tricky thing. Uh, you get behind this hip bone and just follow it. Uh, kind of lightly. Don't use a lot of pressure because if your knife slips out, you'll cut yourself. It goes down there, it just kind of cups around. I'll show it to you when I get it out, what it looked like, and you can get an idea of how it lays in there and what you got to do to get it out. But what we do is we try to get over in here by, I'll try to show it to you a little better, by this socket that's in this uh, hind round. There's a socket in here. And uh, we'll try to expose it a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's it's right there is the end of the ball socket, just almost like what was in that in that front shoulder. Once you get it popped, it'll start coming apart for you. I'll go ahead and take a little bit more meat down here, a little further, so you can get an idea what you're up against. I'll take the knife and try to get it right in here. There, I popped a little bit of that cord there. So now it's separated and this hip bone we're taking out starts coming up this way from in behind and uh, this here bone right here uh, the meat goes underneath it so I'll just go ahead and take the knife and uh, run it backward underneath there it'll start coming out easier with every stroke so that's that's the hip bone complete. And like mm -hmm. I say, this is how it sat in there. Uh, you got a couple of knobs here. You got to go around to get the meat out. I think you left too much on it. You can always take some more off, but for the most part, there isn't too much left on there. It's all bone, solid bone. Yeah. So that is your hip bone. There's a little bit of this bone here that comes out a little ways, not too far. Just go with your knife cut this part off here. This can be used for steaks or roast down the line, whatever. Now that we got that pretty well done, we're just down to the center of the round, which consists of a top round and a bottom round. I'll show you in a minute uh, exactly what it is. So we will go ahead. There's a femur bone, just a single bone. It's about so big around. We're going to work that out of there. And then we'll go ahead and take apart the two muscle groups, the top from the bottom. So what we'll do is just go along the top of that bone a little bit. It gets a little wider back here because this bone does flange out. Bigger part of the shank bone. But just, just go back and just keep uh, working on the, on the meat, getting that bone out of there. See it's starting to roll out. Get on the underneath side. Keep coming around. And now if you want to go ahead from this side, just on a little shallow cut. There's the bone there. And like I say, there was a little bump of a bone that comes off the bottom here. You gotta go out around it. And basically your your femur bone is out. That's your femur bone. So now everything here is completely boneless. Uh, we'll go ahead and what I like to do maybe is take this off so I can show you a little better what we got. This is really the rump area. Uh, I'll just go ahead and we'll be wind. Well, we're going to throw that into trim anyway, so I'll set it over. This is the this is the round. 
we're going to separate the top round from the bottom round. Now that it's completely boneless, it's easy enough to do. You just get in here and work a little bit at this, this white seam stuff that you see. And then you'll see it kind of gets down to where there's nothing but a little bit of gummy tissue holding it together, like this stuff here. Mm -hmm. And you just keep hitting that with the tip of your knife, and it'll keep rolling apart. And then when it's about through, you can go ahead and finish it off. And this is your top round, and this is your bottom round. There's a little tissue here from the sirloin tip that I take off. Goes into trim. Yeah, and uh, the deer processing we have in the other film, step by step, a six part series, uh, someone asked why I didn't do something with the eye around. Well, I left it on the bottom, so when I made bottom round steaks, each steak was a little larger. Uh, over on the opposite side of this silver sinew here, you come to this side of the bottom round, along this uh, fat here, and you can see an imaginary little seam there. And that's what's holding your eye round intact to the bottom round. So I will just go ahead slowly, take it off. This is your eye round. And like the fella said, or the gal, whoever watched it, these would be nice on the grill. You know, you go ahead and brown them real good, cook them medium rare. It's a nice cut of meat. It's totally boneless. What's left on the on this bottom round area, up in this fatty area, you go ahead and this is part of the shank meat yet that runs way up in. It's uh, like it's like Dave was saying. It's pretty sinewy, has gristle in it. It's great for grinding or whatever. And then you have uh, one piece of uh, fat in here that uh, actually contains a gland. It's nothing to scare you, but right in here. There is a gland that's inside of that uh, fat. Yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it, but yeah, that's what that fat is for. It holds that gland in place. And anyways, uh, you would just clean this off as you wish, and we would take the silver off and cut steaks out. Same thing on here, the, on this top round. There is an area on this top round, you'll notice where this fat area is. If you can take and flip that top round upside down, and just come over here where that fat area is. Go down a little bit with your knife and you will pick up a seam. You may as well take this right off of here because there is, there is some sinew and stuff in there. And now you, what you have is, uh, you're going to have a top round that is pretty much clear of any, any type of uh, sinew and stuff. I usually do take a little bit of this cap off. It's not much. But I just take it off, it makes it easier for slicing, if you're going to slice steaks out of it. And I'm going to take two of them home. These are good steaks. Flash fry them. So, I'm just going to go ahead and take me a couple home. That's about what I like them, quarter to a half inch. And uh, I'm going to have some steaks. So anyways, this is half of the loin area that we took out. Remember I cut it in half with the saw. It was about this long. I cut it in half. Mm -hmm. So I could, for the sake of processing it, show you how to take out your loin strips. Those are those real good back straps, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. The primer primer part of the, of the deer. And on this part here, there is some of the inside tenderloins, which are the best of all. That is what went with the other part of this. Mm -hmm. This is the butt tender. This is the rest of the tender. Yep. Clean them up. Uh, those, I think, Dave would probably like to keep and not grind. Yeah. Since they are. So all you do is, is go down on each side of this vertebrae and follow, follow your knife down the bones, and you'll come down to a solid bone. Just run your knife out. Hit the bone, run it out. Hit the bone, run it out. Kind of flatly across the bone. Mm-hmm. There is your inside tenderloin. Now usually yep. uh, what I do, there is a strap, strap on the side. I usually pull that off. It has a little bit of a leader in it. Just kind of clean the rest of it off. And then uh, what you got here is full inside tender. And it is. It's tender as mother's love. Mm-hmm.
Yep. And we'll do the same thing on this side. A lot of guys do like to take this off out in the field if they can get at it. Uh, if it's a little difficult, they aren't that big, you can gouge them up kind of bad. Just kind of disgust yourself when you think you got something good, but if you wait till you get back into a good environment, you can take them out nicely. Like I say, there's one strip on the side to take off. And uh, any of the fat, of course, which isn't much. Mm -hmm. And you got yourself two great tenders here. Yep. Yeah, like you say, if you're reaching up in that chest cavity in the dark right, right after you gut it, Sometimes it's going to be hard to uh, to get it, you know, nice and clean right down to the bone like we got here. Right. Yeah. And with those hinds attached to it, your butt part is really hard because you got that big hip bone. Sure. And all that stuff. That yeah. You had to split to even get in there to look get at this. Right. Yeah. It's getting pretty tight in there if you're trying to do that out in the field. We have removed the inside tenders. They aren't super big, but they are very very good. And now what we'll do is flip this over. And what we're going to do is take off the loin strips, which are, are on each side of this backbone. And uh, of course those are your second most primal, primal cut. Mm -hmm. So what I do is just go down this backbone a little bit. It's real close to the surface. Give yourself an idea where it's at, in case you're not real familiar with this. And then uh, we're just going to knife it. <clears throat> on each side of the bone right down to the very backbone. Same thing on the other side. There. Now all you're going to do is get your knife in there, go down to that, go down to this bone here. That's This bone runs along in here. So you're going to go down to that bone there and then work off the edge of it. So all you do is you get your knife in there. I'm hitting that bone so I'm riding right down off of it. Get the bone right down off of it. The bone right down off of it. You just kind of keep working your way right up to the top. And there's kind of a little wad of fat here that this whole thing sits in. You just want to roll it out of that fat. You're going to take the fat off anyhow, and it will pop out. And there is one side of your loin strip. Mm -hmm. I like to take the silver off of it. Want me to do that now? Yeah, go ahead. I like to take the silver off. Before I do it, I like to get this real hard part of the silver removed. You can see it on this side better. If you get that off, then all your silver on the other side is in one straight line without this interfering with you. And this is tough. Very tough. So, to get the silver off, we ju I just shave it off. People do different things. I guess you can cut your steak and then slip it off of there, but this is tough. That's what makes your steak curl up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely, definitely want to get that off. Right? right. So, I just get my knife underneath there. Pretty sharp. As long as I know I can see the blade, I'm getting it pretty well taken care of. Same thing this way. We just want to get as much of this off as we can. Uh, it's not going to kill you if you leave it on. I mean it's all edible product but it's nice to have it off of there. Should be pretty sufficient there. Mm -hmm. And there are your loin strip steaks, medallions, whatever you want to call them. You can butterfly them to make them that big, or you can, I prefer just to cut them off straight because just yep. aim around in the pan and have it done. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're good that so, way. So and then, then you do the same thing to this side. Okay. And this was that other half of the loin. I'm going to take one side of the loin strips out just to show you. There's a little meat here. Up that would have been on the ribs. Put it in here. But again, it's the same thing. You can definitely see how defined mm -hmm. the uh, backbone is. Yep. These are where your vertebrae are going. 
So this one here you don't even have to really expose. I'm going to go ahead and go right down this side. Once you get down below the tops of the vertebrae you can angle your knife toward toward the backbone because it there's all kinds of there's like a picket fence through there and then run it right down to where you feel bone at the bottom and again same thing take your knife there's a little hump there go over it mm -hmm. and go over these rib bones there's a few rib bones in this one because this is more up where the loin stopped and the rib started but you know how we all like rib steaks loin steaks rib steaks what's the difference they're all good and we just keep rolling this out off of the bones that we hit and then when we hit those bones down here we just come out yeah you just let the bones kind of guide you through it. right you just take the tip tip of your knife or the first third of your knife you can feel it on there and this again like the other one it lays in a seam of fat and there's your line strip mm-hmm Yep. Any uh, meat that you think you want to salvage, just go ahead and do it. There really isn't much here. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's how you get, the, this is the rib section of your uh, loin strips. Yeah, that, nice. Uh, that's, where they, that's where they separated from each other. Yeah. So basically, before I cut this in half, this is what you had. And it's much easier to take it off this way in two pieces than it is trying to do the whole thing. Right, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll take the silver off of that sure. at some point, just yep. like we did the other one. And take the and other then, one off this side, just yep. like you were going to do on the other one part. Yeah, and we got the other one on this side. It's, it's pretty much the same way. Right. Okay, this is the next section. A lot of people might want to go ahead and do that, take the saw, make two nice neck rows. It'll be kind of bony, because the whole vertebrae is intact. It goes all the way through here. But mm -hmm. there are they are great rows. They really are. And uh, But anyways, we're going to take ours, uh, kind of disassemble it because we're going to grind it. So what you have, this is your top part. You can tell where the throat is here. That's the bottom part. So what I'm going to do first is get that esophagus out of here. And uh, that comes out pretty easily on each side of the esophagus. You've got a nice piece of real dark meat that runs down in here. You can see how it's kind of coming out. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that piece of meat because, I mean, it's a pretty good size hunk of meat. And uh, it will come off on the other side of this esophagus also. Okay, this is the piece of meat. This is your esophagus. Yep. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that right out of there. Sometimes yep. it can have debris left in it. This one was pretty clean. And then there's a little fat on each side of where I took it out. You just go ahead and get that out of there. And then we'll just go ahead and set it right on that flat spot where we took that esophagus out of. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and, and work the meat off of that great big vertebrae. And usually what you do is you can kind of see this imaginary line. That's actually where the bones stick straight up in the neck. And what you want to do is come down across the top. Cut that line out. And as you're doing it, you'll just try to go a little deeper each time. And you're starting to see what the... It's just mm -hmm. a real tough, real tough son of a gun. And it sits right on top of all those bones that stick up. So you can go on the side of it with your knife, each side of it, and toward the bones. Try to go ahead and lift it up a little, and then you can uh, maybe get a hook into it, pull some of it out. It comes out right down to the very front where you sawed it off, sawed the neck away from the head, and that's it right there. Mm -hmm. Like I say, that is that's tough. Now we're just going to work on taking the meat off, just like on the back line. That bone goes down the center. Right up in here you have a pretty high bone. If you catch it to one side, just like you did on your lines, and catch this part to one side, and it's got a bone configuration that goes in and out and in and out, and I think you have like two layers. So all you can do is take your knife, work along those pointed areas, 
get on the underneath side, go in a little bit, and you're going to hit another one, and you just go ahead and come off of that one. Bones. And don't try to go into those bones too hard that you're going to get bone chips off. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, one half, one half of your neck, and it's uh, right. it's, it's very really nice meat. That's why yeah. guys uh, use them for neck roast, boneless neck roast, or bone in. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like I say, they're nice and lean. They come apart in seams. That's what makes them so lean when they're cooked long and slow. They actually fall apart. Anyways, uh, yeah, but the main thing you're doing, you're taking that neck, you're getting the esophagus out, you're getting that spinal column out, and you're getting that real tough yellow leader uh, out of there. And uh, then what's left is the meat. Yeah, that's the get, tough leader that you'll see. Yeah, you want to get that out. You don't want anything to do with that in the frying pan. No. So, and what you got there, you've got one more side just to, to right. take off, eh? We have the okay. other side of the neck. Same mm -hmm. thing, just the opposite side. Yeah. Go just down there, start working your knife down mm -hmm. around all these little knobs. You'll hit them with the tip of your knife, just go out to the end of them, off the end of them, and then go back in toward the vertebrae. And, uh, you're ready to take it off after you go through that second one. See, there's a row here and the bottom row here. Yep. And this is your neck meat, which okay. will contribute real well to your grind. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all I'm going to be doing is going through the tub and kind of trimming off the fat on some of these pieces, putting the good lean pieces in this bucket, and then uh, we're going to be dropping that through the grinder, and we're going to be making some uh, real good venison burger. And again, if you're interested in making venison burger, go to my channel, go to uh, Canada's Practical Outdoors, go to the deer processing playlist, and we've got a whole video dedicated to making some, some really good uh, venison burger. So if you're interested in that, check that out. But uh, I got some work to do here. So, what did we learn today? All right, well, first we learned you could pop those front shoulders off with just a knife okay and that the meat off of the shoulders is generally used for roasts stew meat or ground into hamburger okay then we learned how to get the hindquarters off with the saw right we took both those hindquarters off at the same time with the saw then we threw them on the bench and we split them down the middle you know uh, break them down into easier chunks to work with and then uh, then we kind of learned that that shank meat right the meat on the on the narrowing part of the leg you know, that's going to be more for stew meat or maybe ground into hamburger. But then the rest of those hindquarters, pretty much all that stuff is some really good cuts of meat uh, that really make good steaks. Then we learned how to break down the rib cage loin section with the saw. Okay, learned how to get that off the animal, break it down into easier uh, to work with uh, pieces. And then we also learned how to remove those inner loins and those outer loins and those of course are, are real good cuts of meat that make real good steaks. Then we also learned how to bone out the neck, right? Get that esophagus out, uh, get that spinal column out and generally uh, that neck meat will be used in roasts or it can be ground up in the hamburger also. Then we also learned shooting a buck in the late archery season in Michigan's Upper Peninsula oftentimes involves snow and cold. Okay, there we go. There's a, a quick overview of processing a deer. Uh, again, if you want to get into a little bit more of the details, right, we go to sure. the uh, go to that six-part series that we did uh, before. Go to Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Go to the deer processing playlist. And again, we have that six-part series that kind of goes more step-by-step -step with each section and we you know we do both the front shoulders and we do both the hind quarters and you show some different ways to do each one and you show how to make the roasts and and where to use the saw and maybe where you can get away with not using the saw right. so so that six part series is a lot more in depth but I thought we'd do just kind of a quick overview you know give you guys a, an alternate uh, uh, viewing of how to process a deer so yeah uh, Thanks a lot again, Dad, oh, no for, for cutting up the deer. No problem. Get another one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> I will. Maybe I will. But anyways, guys, hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter. This is my dad, Don Knetter, for Knetter's Practical Outdoors. 
Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.